Good morning and welcome to the third day of the KBS Fest. So I think the next speaker doesn't really need any introduction. He's one of the founders of quantum probability and we heard many accounts of all his contributions to function analysis over the last days. So please let me invite KRP to speak about the new parameterization of Gaussian states. Please. Thank you very much. I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present some results on a very ancient topic on Gaussian states. In 1733, Demover announced that the binomial distribution in the large <coughs> becomes the normal distribution. Later, Laplace and Gauss in their theory of errors, they made a more detailed investigation of this kind of limits, but that was on the real line in the beginning. It was Lagrange who introduced the so-called multivariate normal distribution in full glory. The multivariate normal distribution. with its mean vector and covariance matrix and all the normalizing constants in order. Then at the same time as Planck introduced his theory of black body radiation, The statistician Carl Pearson invented the so called Pearson's chi square test. And the chi square is nothing but sums of squares of normal random variables. And it is very important this a quadratic form in normal variables, quadratic form in commutative normal random variables. Later you face quadratic forms in non-commuting random variable, uh, non-commuting observables. And Pearson's, just as uh, Planck's, uh, Planck's black body radiation that led to the discovery of so called thermal state in quantum mechanics, which led to later on to the construction of Gaussian states. Now, in all the analysis of Gaussian states throughout when you examine the history of the subject, it is the mean and covariance parameters which constantly get the attention. But in quantum theory, Gaussian state has also a digital phase and in the context of computers, quantum computers, this digital phase has acquired its own glow. And to look at this digital phase, you seem the, the parameters like mean and position, the, the mean and covariance of position and momenta which are continuous variables that is not very important in the in the context of computing and it is the particle aspect which is more dominating and this is also derived from experiment later experiments with lasers 
in quantum optics. So that you study the number of photons in a state. So it is the particle aspect which, which is also from the computational point of view, it is also the digital aspect. To analyze this aspect, the, uh, you, you know in the history of central limit theorems, uh, to analyze the large, scale, uh, large convolutions in the limit, Lyapunov introduced the notion of Fourier transform and also in quantum uh, case, when you study the position and momenta or equivalently annihilation and creation, you it is the Fourier transform is a powerful technique there. And in 1970, Kushan and Hudson, 1970, Kushan and Hudson, they proved the, the a quantum mechanical theorem for the creation annihilation pairs and arrived at the most general uh, Gaussian state. Just as you have binomials in classical probability, you have spin, the Pauli spin operators, spin matrices in quantum theory and if you take independent copies of that, for that also a, a central limit theorem is possible and that is a very wonderful central limit theorem which was proved by Philip Bion that happened around 1990. It is, it is uh, very nicely described in a paper in the seminar Strasbourg which was in the series Elimon the probability quantic uh, in which Mayer presented a series of seminars, there Bion's work also appears. And that is a very, very beautiful central limit theorem. That also leads to Gaussian, another route to Gaussian state. And then there, there is a whole lot of literature on central limits and Gaussian states. So I want to look at the so-called the digital phase. I call it the digital phase of the of the Gaussian state. For this, it is convenient to go to particle statistics, and so it is better to go from L R n R n when it is the space R n when it is quantized, it becomes L two of R n the Hilbert space in uh, classical quantum mechanics and then later in the concept, context of particles hidden behind continuous systems, the boson Fox space, that is the most relevant uh, object as Dirac pointed out. And I am going to restrict myself to only the finite mode boson Fox space and it, what I am going to say, it, it reveals a whole lot of problems for which I do not know um, any methods, any new methods to, to tackle them. Yes, uh, just the, the the screen behind this large hidden painting has been lifted a little in the thesis by Tiju John Cherian. So, Tiju came to me a year ago to Delhi and we began studying the digital phase in detail. We thought we will first write uh, lecture notes on Gaussian states, 
but by the time I have lost my vision, so I could not embark on this program and Tiju had been helping me uh, in doing this, but it is very slow, but in the process we uh, discovered some points which look interesting, that is what I wish to present, that is the beginning of this story. To this end, I consider a finite dimensional complex Hilbert space of dimension n with a specific basis to, dis to distinguish the modes, so which are the, the orthonormal basis is uh, labeled by j 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n, so that h can be identified through this orthonormal basis with the front c n, the unfold complex. And you look at the boson Fox space gamma h, which is the usual uh, c, c direct sum h, direct sum etc. h symmetric tensor product h, etc. And then the unfold symmetric tensor product, this infinite direct sum. This is called vacuum subspace, this is one particle subspace, this is two particle subspace. So, this arrangement is convenient to describe anything concerning digital phase. Now, you consider, you have to consider states rho, state in gamma h. We need the notion of Fourier transform in our, uh, as a tool in our analysis in the beginning and later we will forget the, uh, forget the tool. So, to introduce the Fourier transform you introduce the so called while operators w z, z belonging to h, where w z, where w z is equal to e to the power the creation field a dagger z minus the annihilation field a z, where this A z, a, a dagger means the adjoint. So, the annihilation field e is A z is nothing but sigma z j into A j, where A 1, A 2, A n, A n or this is a summation from 1 to n, they are the annihilation operators and the w obey the so called weil commutation relations these are unitary operators and the fourier transform actually uh, uh, my friend hudson tells me that the correct name for this transformation is not quantum fourier transform because it is partly first operator and partly functional rho hat z he found an appropriate name for this trace rho trace rho w z this is a function and he calls it the fourier weil transform because you use the weil operators the weil displacement operators and define this fourier weil transform this is a this is I think the most appropriate name and he wrote to me a, an email a few days ago saying that this is more appropriate. So, I have borrowed this, borrowed this name and Hudson uses this Fourier transform also in his study in his first early investigations 
of uh, the quantum central limit theorem for annihilation and creation pairs, which also leads to quantum Brownian motion. And what is this rho hat z? The, so, this is nothing but the uh, expectations I will denote by this symbol. So, it is the expectation of w z in the state rho. I will drop the rho uh, whenever it is too much to write. And you, we all know the normal distribution and its Fourier transform. So, in the same spirit, you can write down. So, a state rho is called Gauss is Gaussian. So, this is a central definition. A state rho is called Gaussian if the Fourier transform is the exponential of a very special quadratic, uh, a, a special uh, second degree polynomial. What is that? Rho hat z. equal to exponential, you look at the exponent of w z. So, you put the average of that a dagger z minus a z and you see it is linear in the real and imaginary parts. So, if I write z as x plus i y, where x and y are in x y or in r n r n then you see this is a linear form plus 1 half you see i times uh, a dagger z minus a z is an observable and you can recognize that observable. So, half of the uh, a dagger z minus a z remove its mean the average of these two you take the put it here and the, take the average and then take the deviation from the average square. So, this is an this is an i times this is an obs observable and this is i times the whole thing is i times an observable and the square of that and there is a half here and the average of that square with respect to rho. So, you can write the Gaussian state and if you compute uh, there they involve only the uh, first and second moments of linear combinations of a z and a z a dagger z. So, you can see that it is an exponential of a second degree polynomial in the variables x and y. So, you can recognize the recognize the Gaussian state. It is this which appears uh, at the correspondence between uh, state and Fourier transform is 1 to 1 that is inversion formula, Bockner's theorem, inversion theorem and all that one can prove all of them. And there is a summary of all this in, in the recent uh, preprint which Tiju and I prepared. So, I did not write some people may miss the name. I am happy to have worked with, with the assistance of Tiju. John Cherian, who is here. And if the, I have some difficulty in expressing myself, uh, sometimes I may miss what I have written. And for reference, there is a recent uh, archive number which I do not remember. It is available in the archive, and then you get it filled from with the help of. Uh, in fact, I should have put it in that slide, they did not occur to my head. <coughs> so, from all the details of proofs and all that all the lemmas required, they are all proved in this uh, in this preprint. So, 
the central concept I, the central notion which I make use of I, I was told by Robin Hudson that this uh, notion is also occurs in a paper by Wobata but unfortunately I cannot read nowadays so I cannot go and scan the literature and find out the details. So, the idea is to introduce for any operator bounded operator z operator z in gamma of h in the boson fox space which i introduced can one please lift the two blackboards and then at the same time you We I introduce G Z what is called a I call it a generating function G Z U V elementary notion because exponential vectors play a very important role. This is for an operator it is a Laplace transform right. So, I write exponential e and with respect to the chosen basis I conjugate u and then I write z and then I write e v. This is what I call the generating function. It contains all the information about that operator generating function of z. This is a very extremely useful tool when you think in a statistical way about operator. An operator and statistics have to come together. This is a very useful uh, in useful uh, tool, much better than the Fourier transform. So, I will sing some songs in praise of this. And I want to select a certain special class of operators. The, you know Laplace transform of a normal distribution is again e to the power of quadratic form. So, keeping that in view I carve out from the space of operators in gamma h I pull out a very special class. So, I introduce a definition an operator z is said to belong to the class E 2 to indicate that everything originates from h. Operator z belongs to the class E 2 h. If the generating function this is the central definition g z u v is of the form a scalar c scalar c into exponential of alpha trans alpha transpose this is in c n alpha transpose u plus beta transpose v so, these are the linear terms this is this is scalar term is here these are two linear terms plus I think I continue the definition here plus next blackboard u transpose a matrix A u plus u transpose another matrix lambda v plus v transpose b v. This is written as a quadratic form. So, it is natural to take a 
complex n cross n symmetric symmetric matrix lambda simply a complex matrix complex matrix b is again a complex uh, n cross all are n cross n Na, same as the number of modes symmetric uh, complex symmetric matrix so you have the parameter c alpha beta then the matrix is a lambda and b so a sext sextuple a sextuple of parameters whenever the generating function has this form i say that this is of the class e to h and e to h has many interesting properties but before that a, a word z is self adjoint z equal to z dagger if and only if c real c real i want to cut down the number of this is a general operator but we are special we have special operators which we need c real uh, b equal, lamb, uh, uh, beta equal to alpha bar bar a a equal, b equal to a bar b equal to a bar and lambda is hermitian lambda equal to lambda dagger so these are the conditions for the operator z to be uh, the operator z to be self adjoint and in order that this z be positive one more condition is needed and that is lambda greater than or equal to 0 lambda plus lambda greater than or equal to 0 for z to be positive operator for z to be a positive operator you need this condition so for a so for a for a self adjoint operator the number of parameters reduces to a, a real scalar a, a hermitian sorry a a complex symmetric matrix and a hermitian matrix and you need the additional condition lambda greater than or equal to 0 to ensure positivity so three only three parameters to be looked at and these three parameters will play a dominating role in the digital phase of studying operators so digital phase of studying positive self adjoint operators now in particular states now we have a theorem i have taken so long to state the first theorem e to h is a semi group e to h is a dagger closed closed semi group dagger closed semi group the proof depends on two things the well known formula in quantum optics according to which you have 1 over pi power n integral c z 
C Z D Z equal to identity. A resolution, a continuous resolution of the identity into C Z is coherent state, namely normalized the exponential vectors, right? So these are the coherent states. C z is nothing but e to the minus norm squared by 2 into the exponential vector at z, right. My so, this is the first uh, main main result, it is a rather tedious uh, ma making use of the, this is known as the I would call it as the clouder Bergman theorem, clouder Bergman resolution of the identity and in quantum optics Glauber and Sudarshan use this repeatedly. Uh, in all calculations. So, this is a fundamental formula in quantum optics. Along with this formula, one uses Gaussian integrals with complex quadratic forms. The two put together lead you to that theorem. Then some point, some important point, all Gaussian states belong to E to H all Gaussian states belong to E to H. Two, the second quantization of any contraction belongs to E to H. T contraction. All these things it is good to analyze carefully in the infinite dimensional Hilbert space and also check further extend it to quasi free states and it is a completely open, open field to study. Thirdly, another very interesting feature I say that a unitary operator u in gamma h, a unitary operator in gamma h is called a Gaussian symmetry, is called a Gaussian symmetry, symmetry if for any, for any Gaussian state rho for any Gaussian state rho, the transformed state u rho u dagger is also Gaussian, is also Gaussian. Such an operator, unitary operator, I call it a Gaussian symmetry. Every such symmetry belongs to E to H. Gaussian symmetry u that is the third point belongs to E to H. But what is interesting is if any unitary operator in E to H is also a Gaussian symmetry. So, a unitary operator is a Gaussian symmetry if and only if it belongs to E to H. So, U, U belongs to E to H if and only if it is a Gaussian symmetry. All the Gaussian symmetries form a group and that group is a semi direct product of the additive 
uh, actually semi uh, the, the group can be finally uh, summarized as the semi product of the additive group H with the symplectic transforms of Cn that is in symplectic transforms of H the semi product of those two they form the every Gaussian symmetry is a product of a while operator W u and uh, uh, a unitary operator depending on a on, a, on an element of the symplectic group S p 2 n uh, which is considered as an operator in the in, in the Fox space realization. I do not want to go and get lost into that. Uh, in next week, uh, Tiju will give a, a lecture where will, he will explain this point in great detail. I have uh, a conjecture, some kind of conjecture here. So, it gives rise to an open problem which is to be investigated. It is desirable to have a complete description of u 2 h and I feel that an element of u 2 h has to be of the form it, I, it can be expressed in a weak order as a product in weak order. Of course, there is a scalar and then this is a conjecture to examine sigma a quadratic form alpha r s in the creator creation operators followed by the second quantization of some operator in H lambda lambda an operator in H of course, if it is if the operator z is bounded uh, it, this will be a contraction multiplied by u to the sorry this plus this plus a linear a linear term in a r dagger and then u to the power sigma beta r s in uh, annihilation operator plus sigma gamma r annihilation operator. I think some such uh, factorization exists that is a that is an open problem. <coughs> now, for a for a uh, again this leads to the following you know if you take exponential of a second order polynomial and and then multiply two of them it is again exponential of a second order polynomial so for example two normal densities when you multiply you get again a normal density after some normalization right modulo a normalization it is again a normal density a parallel law is possible here also. Then, yes, 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 the following is true. A state rho is Gaussian if and only if it belongs to A to H. Rho is Gaussian. Rho symbol symbol rho means it is a state. Rho is Gaussian. This is a theorem. Like symmetry. Like unitary operators now for states themselves, rho is Gaussian if and only if rho belongs to E to H. Now, on the state rho, you can apply time is up almost, time is over almost. Oh, you want to show some slides. Yeah, I I want to show some slides if there is time. Um, okay, you can show. All right. So, 
So the Gaussian state rho, Gaussian state rho, oh, the, this place is to, is reserved for you. Sorry. So it is Gaussian. Oh. You see, if I take the state rho and then I apply a while operator w u w u dagger, by doing this, I can make the mean 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 value of the of the of the state rho. Namely, by mean value I mean the expectation of a, the annihilation field that should be zero. By applying w u w u dagger, you can make mean zero. So it is enough to study essentially Gaussian state with mean zero. So that means it is completely described by covariance matrix. Now the parameterization, the new parameterization, uh, I can omit the so rho mean zero. I, I don't want to hurry because I cannot do I cannot do anything in a hurry now. That is also that leads to many domestic problems also <laughs> because I you want to come to come to Bangalore from Delhi. It require it required to really push me hard. So, mean value, mean zero case is the only thing, you can always reduce problems to mean zero. Then only two parameters, A, a symmetric, complex symmetric matrix and this Hermitian, uh, positive Hermitian, a, a positive contraction lambda, only this pair, this is the complete parameterization of mean zero. Uh, mean zero Gaussian states, and then that is a so it, uh, uh, the generating function for the row is a cos scalar times uh, e to the power u transpose a u plus u transpose lambda v plus v transpose uh, a a bar a bar v because self adjoint I mean b will be a bar. So that is the and what is C? The formula for C I cannot read the screen. The formula for C is somewhere in the screen, right? In terms of the other two parameters. So C is a function of a and a and lambda. So it it it, it the, the the normalizing constant C is a, is a little complicated. Then what is the connection between the old covariance matrix and the new parameters A lambda? That also must be somewhere on the screen. Is it uh, clear? The covariance matrix there is denoted by S, but you cannot directly have S, it is the half plus S inverse which plays the important role. So that gives you here it is, I can see vaguely half plus S inverse. So one this and then the state rho is pure, actually every statistical property of the Gaussian state is hidden somewhere in this A and lambda. The Gaussian state is pure if and only if lambda is 0. Now the Gaussian state rho may be may contain a pure component a part of it may be pure and the the the, the part the dimension of the part uh, the number of modes which are pure that turns out to be the rank of lambda the, uh, this, this this i noted only a few days ago then finally uh, one more formula which is not exhibited here because I proved it only recently uh, and that is rho has the following beautiful, uh, beautiful form. Rho can be expressed as that scalar c and then 
e to the power if a is uh, a the entries of a are alpha or s then it is sigma alpha or s there is you are able to recover completely the density matrix in terms of this a or dagger a s dagger and then gamma of lambda and then u to the power sigma alpha r s bar this is creation here and this is annihilation here this is almost like uh, lagrange's formula for uh, classical normal densities the density matrix in terms of the new parameters has this uh, very pretty uh, pretty expression and this makes uh, the tomography of gaussian states very practical so from the information theoretic point of view i think this is a very useful formula rather than saying that it is the exponential of a, a second order differential operator because there it becomes an eigen value problem and it is a uh, the matrix coefficients are rather complicated time is up so i stop abruptly thank you very much thank you. for listening to me So we will take the time for a short discussion. Are there questions or remarks? I don't know. I may not be able to ah. hear or. Okay, then maybe we try to catch up on the time. So thank you again. <laughs> thank you.